In this part one video, we look at the costumes of Black Panther, the 2018 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name. Coming up. Welcome back to another episode of Costume Co. If this is your first time here, we do almost weekly videos analyzing many of your favorite television shows and movies from a costume perspective. If this interests you, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. In this part one episode of a two-part series, we do a complete breakdown of all of the principal characters in the Black Panther movie. I also have another video where I had the opportunity to interview costume designer Ruthie Carter, so I'll leave that in the description below if you want to check it out. Warning, there will be some spoilers for the entire Black Panther movie. The costumes of Black Panther were created by American costume designer Ruthie Carter. Carter earned two Academy Award nominations for Best Costume Design for Spike Lee's Malcolm X and Steven Spielberg's Amistad, and more recently, an Emmy nomination in 2016 for the reboot of Roots based upon Alex Haley's novel. Carter comes from a theater background and worked her way through the film business, most notably allying herself with director Spike Lee on multiple projects. Working with Marvel Studios was a whole new experience for Carter, her saying, I'm used to coming into a blank slate, but they definitely have a roadmap, so I had to get myself together and get on the road. I felt like whatever they gave me to create and make from their model, I was okay with it because there was so much more. We were creating a universe. I was happy to receive four or five characters kind of already in development, and they were open to what I could bring to those sketches. Carter said at first it was daunting to be in a place that was so specific. You know you're a contributor, but you just don't really know how at first because they're doing stuff that you normally do. And it wasn't until I got to the end of the journey that I realized my contribution. Here's an incredible production shot of all of the Wakandan tribes in full costume. And this is taken from Carter's Instagram account. Here is the look of all of the tribes in the movie, each tribe with their own distinctive color. The Golden Tribe or the Panther Tribe are the ruling monarchy of Wakanda. At the start of Black Panther, Prince T'Challa is set to become the new king of the African nation of Wakanda. When actor Chadwick Boseman returned to the Marvel Universe after debuting as Black Panther in Captain America Civil War, he had one request of Carter and her team, telling her, Ruth, I could not breathe out of my nose in that helmet. I couldn't lift my arm above my shoulder. So when you make me the new superhero suit, could you make it so I can lift my arms? Here are some of the initial concepts of the new Panther suit. According to a New York Times article, Ryan Meiderding, head of visual development at Marvel Studios, designs all of its superhero suits. But Carter put her stamp on the three versions made for this movie, adding a raised triangle motif. Carter said, I infused a triangle pattern because in a lot of African art you can see throughout the continent, there is this sacred geometry. It's a mystery what it actually means, but there is an equality inherent there, and mixing that with the Wakanda language that runs along the suit provided a tribal look. And in close-up, or when T'Challa walks throughout the kingdom, it feels very noble. This unused helmet design is taken from Ryan Meiderding's Instagram page. Meiderding said, this one has T'Challa's eyes exposed with a more regal look. Here's artist Keith Christensen's concept of the detail in the suit with the sacred triangle motif. In the Zulu culture, one of many African peoples, the three corners of the triangle signify the father, mother, and child. And if you look closely, you'll see that many of the Wakandan character costumes have this motif incorporated in some way. This is the final version of the Black Panther suit. According to a Disney press package, Carter opted to streamline the new suit and use a lighter material. The vibranium layer, which is actually a silver missile suit, 
is visible underneath an overlay of a very thin fabric that's imprinted with a repeat tribal triangle pattern that's known as Akavango. The suit also has a subtle medallion emblazoned over the chest plate and a new panther tooth necklace that bolsters the tribal feel, as does the revamped helmet. During his battle with M'Baku, T'Challa wears these shorts with a front flap that are made from cloth block printed with a variety of Andinkra symbols, which are a symbol of the Akan people of the Ivory Coast and Ghana. Here is a work in progress concept also by Keith Christensen that was ultimately scrapped. In the astral plane, T'Challa wears this intricately embroidered pure white kaftan, although depending on the region, it might be called an abaya, tijalaba, or thobe. Of T'Challa's many costumes, Carter said, everything had to be created for him. Everything was specially embroidered. Everything had a special tailoring because he's the king. It had to have a certain swagger and flow to it. It was the king's cloth. And just as a side note, this type of decoration on the kaftan is called passementary trim. Here's some examples of very fine passementary taken from Pinterest. Here are some of the initial concepts for T'Challa's kingly wardrobe. And Carter says of T'Challa's royal garb, we felt that in the typical sense of what happens in a throne room, you have the king and the crown, and maybe he's head of the military. So we gave him two things, kind of an open sandal so that it felt like Africa, but also he wore a beautiful tailcoat. And once again, this coat has passementary detail on both the front and sleeves. In the South Korean casino scene, T'Challa ditches his royal togs in exchange for more contemporary duds, but perhaps with a dab of vibranium. Carter said for T'Challa's dinner jacket that had that magical fabric that had a little gloss and sheen to it. When I look at that fabric and how it photographed, it really feels like panther fabric, but really is in context to the rest of the environment, which I worked out with production designer Hannah Beachler. This is personally one of my favorite outfits for T'Challa, so it embraces the purple palette of the castle and incorporates more of the Andinkra symbols that are block printed onto the robe in silver. And of this look, Carter says, I wanted him to have this look of a king and also a military leader. He has the Wakandan kingly drape that moves around very elegantly and we see it on him early when he's walking with Nakia through the town. Everyone else around him is dressed in full-out colors and Afropunk, and it separates him and presents him as the king. In a Collider interview, Carter says of T'Challa's vibrantly bordered costume, we gave him a lovely cloak adorned with kente, and then we gave him military boots and pants. So he gives you two messages that he is princely, he is elegant, but he is also the head of the military, and we are in Africa. And Carter also tells me that she sourced some of the kente from collectors who had real ancient kente. In tradition, kente is used only in special occasions. Kente cloth a fabric produced only in Ghana and Togo, Africa, is woven by Asante and Iwe weavers using specially designed looms in four-inch narrow strips that are then sewn together. A characteristic Asante kente has geometric shapes woven in bright colors along the entire length of the strip. These examples of kente wrappers made from kente are from the Textile Museum of Canada. Here are pictures of T'Challa's robe in the Black Panther workroom. These pictures are taken from Carter's Twitter page. And here's a digital representation of the kente cloth, also taken from Carter's Twitter page. Princess Shuri is T'Challa's baby sister, and she designs new technology for Wakanda, and she's sort of a Marvel Universe version of Q from James Bond. I love this first look for Shuri, a teenage Wakandan outfit that appears to show her youthful expression while keeping some of her cultural roots. The natural hues of her shirt and her cowrie shell choker contrast nicely with the silver metallic accordion pleated skirt. And the motif on her shirt is an Andinkra symbol. 
This symbol is the Wawa Aba, named for the seed of the Wawa tree and represents hardiness, toughness, and perseverance. As I've mentioned in other videos, civilizations throughout the world, including the Norse and the Egyptians, have similar symbols. Here's an early concept of Shuri that was never used, but the panther jaw is incorporated into her tribal costume. In the lab, Shuri's costume is more techno-punk than T'Challa's, whose costume is still traditional. Carter says of coming up with a look for the scene, she says, I was faced with the challenge of the lab coat, and I felt like it was so cliche. Anytime someone says, we're in the lab, people go, well, get the lab coat. Instead, Carter went with the dress that's made with this blend of sporty mesh and technological white fabric. It looks like something that Shuri might have constructed herself. The upcycled look was a constant theme for Shuri. Carter saying, I love the idea of presenting fabrics that are appealing and subtle and look like they could have been recycled. And I thought that was so perfect for Shuri that this is Wakanda and they're very eco-friendly and they care about their country and their environment. She would be the one that would figure out a way to create a vibrant fabric that was a result of recycling. Here is the initial concept of her upcycled costume by concept artist Philip Boutte. And as a note, the bright orange neoprene Afropunk vest made it into the final production. Shuri's final battle costume is essentially a sleeveless unitard, and it's made out of a similar fabric to the other panther suits, but it's sort of softened with the addition of a short sarong. And you might notice that she has vibranium wrapped throughout her hair, and her collar ends at her jawbone with the lower portion of a panther jaw. And these panther techno mitts are obviously an invention of Shuri's, like the majority of the tech gadgets in the kingdom. Queen Ramonda is T'Challa and Shuri's mother, and she's also advisor to T'Challa in his peaceful transition to power. While many of the inhabitants of Wakanda represent that future Afropunk look, Ramonda is all tradition in this stunning near-white court dress. Carter says, I wanted to present an image that was the quintessential queen, hands down, no mistaking it. And I feel like when she's introduced, you know exactly who she is because she has this shoulder mantle, this crown and this big dress. Her silhouette is very, very much of the queen of Wakanda. Ramonda's headdress is inspired by the headdresses worn by Mary women in the South African Zulu tribe. Being a technologically advanced civilization in many ways, while still steeped in African tradition, Carter turned to modern processes to create Ramonda's look, saying she is the queen of Wakanda and they are forward thinking in technology, so her crown would have to be crafted in the most forward thinking manner. The triangles are perfect, the shape of the circle is perfect, and the only way you could achieve this is by doing it on a computer and have it printed in a 3D printer. I felt that if she was the queen, there needed to be a kind of like a legend about the hat or some kind of words written about the queen's hat that if it faced north, south, east and west, it was perfectly cylindrical. There was no side that was not perfect. Carter was inspired by English fashion designer Garrett Pugh saying he designed this shoulder circular thing that was really heavy. It looked like it was made out of leather and I thought, I love that shape. Carter also took some African lace and had it computer generated, working with Julia Kerner, UCLA professor who specializes in wearable art. Here, Ramonda wears an identical hat, but in black. Carter has said in interviews that she created another mantle in black, but it was never used in Black Panther. So she hopes that it might get used when the Black Panther sequel begins production. And many of Queen Ramonda's jewelry pieces were handcrafted by jewelry designer and artist Dorian Fletcher. Carter says of her collaboration with the young designer, I liked how committed she was towards her craft. I thought her style, this sort of handmade seminal style, fit into the African diaspora and ultimately what I considered to be the artistic direction of the costumes. But mostly, I liked her personality. We laughed a lot. 
And Marvel Canada sent me this picture. It's of a model wearing a Ramonda-like costume. So I'm not sure if this is by Ruth Carter or not, although it's possible that this was the costume that was never used. And in this scene, Ramonda and her daughter are exiled from the court. So I'm not familiar with the Black Panther comics so much, but her white hair, as we see it here, is taken directly from the comics. So Disney says of this, the wig was made up of 120 pieces of hair that were literally rolled and handmade into multiple dreadlocks for the actress. And I couldn't make up the details of her dress, but the wrap she wears here is a Lesotho blanket. So I'm going to get more to that in the next video. Zuri is the lead priest and spiritual leader of Wakanda, and he's sort of a mentor figure to Prince T'Challa. The priests are the sole caretakers of the temple and all royal rituals in the kingdom. Like the court, his robes are in royal purple, the color of the heart-shaped vibranium herb, which is a plant that only exists in Wakanda. So this long vest worn over his purple robe is comprised of narrow strips of curled jersey fabric and that from a distance it kind of looks like rope and the beaded geometric pattern on the front tab is created by a variety of seed beads and shell beads. Here are some early concepts of Zuri. This one is by concept artist Keith Christensen. And this one is by concept artist Philip Boutte. Zuri's elaborately pleated robe is likely commercially pleated, perhaps with a pine tree pleat or zigzag coral pleat. And his under tunic, while difficult to decipher, appears to be made from an African wax print and then it's ornamented with a variety of beads, shells and buttons. Pictured here in behind the River Tribe Elder are the Royal Guard that are dressed in purple and gold and then the original concept art by Keith Christensen. The River Tribe has dominion over the waterways and as such, their signature color is green. Carter says, green signifies water, a coastal community, leaves and plants. They live in a lush area as opposed to the perception that Africa is arid and dry. Carter and her team borrowed inspiration from the Mercy Tribe, an African peoples who reside in the isolated Oma Valley in southern Ethiopia. Of the tribe's elders' lip plate, makeup designer Joel Harlow said, We had to clip the plates into the actor's teeth so it would support the weight of the piece. We did that with magnets. Each plate had a lower dental piece that had a little magnet on it. We put the piece in, apply makeup around it so it would look like a lip was stretching around it and then we blend that into the skin. Carter adds, the lip plate is mainly used by African women, all the men do adorn it. And the bigger the lip plate, the more prominence that you have in the tribe. Usually we see this lip plate in National Geographic on women with no tops who are sitting on the ground and here he is with his legs crossed and a beautiful suit by the fashion designer Oswald Boateng. He is bringing so much pride and so much honor to it. Of the River Tribe Elder's more Afropunk look, Carter said, we wanted to connect him to his tribe by giving him his green color. And I remember researching the fashion designer Oswald Boateng, and he has a green suit that has this wonderful tribal print all over it. He said, the fabric is made in Milan and takes six months to hand make it. I was like, seriously, I don't have two weeks. So I just thought, okay, let me just buy something off the rack. Botang has such an elegance in his clothes and such a beautiful craftsmanship to his work. Here is one of the River Tribe Elder suits taken from Oswald Botang's Facebook page. Nakia, a member of the River Tribe, is also a war dog, a Wakanda spy who's often embedded in countries outside of Wakanda. According to Carter, Nikia starts out as a war dog coming from Nigeria. She's fighting for young Nigerian women who are captured by the mean guys who are militants that capture women and put them into slavery. Here's a concept sketch of the costume. This version was a little bit more militaristic in nature than what ended up being her final look. Carter softened up Nikia's spy outfit by adding an African printed headscarf and a woven top in an African print. In an interview, Carter told Collider, I have examined every spectrum of green. Green is a wonderful color because, like nature, all greens work together well. 
That was fascinating because she's such a beautiful tone. She, actor Lupita Nyong, can wear the chartreuse and the bottle green and all of those greens so well. Carter adds that Nakia, seen here on set just outside her trailer, is the number one warrior in the River Tribe and her look was inspired by the Surrey Tribe in Africa. The Surrey Tribe inhabit the mountains of the Great Rift Valley in the plains of southwestern Ethiopia. Her final costume is very close to these two concepts, except that the headdress and war paint were scrapped. It's rare that a principal actor will have their full face covered in makeup, especially when they're as beautiful as Nyong. In this scene, Nakia wears a green and gold leather dress, leggings, and thigh-high boots. Carter usually has some sort of covering on the female warrior's legs, which is really a departure from the comic book costumes of the past. In Nakia's initial concept, the top is essentially the same, but instead of a wrap skirt, similar to the one that Shuri wears in her final boss battle, they went with a dress instead. There is still some sexiness to the dress with these little cutout sections and the racer style armholes plus the bias cut skirt. The construction of the bodice is pretty complicated, so it appears to have a base that's made out of khaki green leather. It's actually more green than it looks here, and then an overlay that's created with this golden green leather geometric pattern. Carter has added this chartreuse beaded necklace and then some stud earrings. Nakia then adds this beautiful bright green infinity scarf, which was a fan favorite. According to Carter, there were four yarns used for Nakia's wrap, from three different dyers. Here are the instructions for Nakia's infinity scarf that Carter generously shared out on Twitter. And I'm sure this will make complete sense to you knitters out there. Now in a later tweet, Carter stated that she was scolded by Marvel for sharing this out to her followers. While Nakia's South Korean casino look was Bond girl-esque, Carter tells Vulture that it seems as though it would be a sky is the limit thing, but it really isn't because this is a superhero film and she is a superhero. There were parameters. She's entering the casino undercover as an African princess. She has to wear green because she is part of the river tribe. She needs to look elegant and therefore needs to wear an elegant dress. She also needs to be able to fight, so she needs to have a dress that will allow her to move and to fight. You can see that the silhouette was determined early on in this concept, which was a sleeveless gown with two high slits for ease of movement. The fabric choice came later using high-tech means. Carter explains, so this is an original pattern in line work that's laid and printed on a stretch fabric. It's the same process that we use to print the fabric for the Black Panther suit, and it's to give her stretch and enough flexibility so that she could fight. The armbands kind of inform that she is protecting herself, and you can imagine that because the dress is from Wakanda, it might have vibranium laced into it, so we did a metallic paint so that in a certain light really does kind of illuminate. This dress was actually a warrior dress, but it's in disguise. Carter and her team had come up with a less armored Dorma Lodge look for Nakia in this concept on the left, but ultimately went the same way as Akoya and the rest of the all-female Wakandan special forces. Here's an onset shot of actor Lapita Nyong dressed in her Dora Milaje costume. Check out the split toe boots she's wearing. And here's Nakia in the final look. So I'll get into the details of this costume when I look at the costumes of the Dora Milaje in the next video. And that ends part one on the costumes of Black Panther. In part two, we'll look at the costumes of Akoya and the Dora Milaje, Eric Killmonger, and Wakabi. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, consider subscribing and sharing it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching.